Welcome to this year's Google Summer of Cloud panel session. Um, we have four presentations right now, two of our students, and two done by me. Uh, and after these presentations, I would like to discuss this year's Google Summer of Cloud program from our side, because in contrast to the previous years, it was a bit unsuccessful, and we had some problems that we should fix for the next few years. But let's start with uh, the talks, and the first one will be here with Daniel.
great paper sites that, that is also known as duplex. In printer, before you could do that in printer properties, which by the way um, is kind of cut off, but it's right there in the corner. You see that the button properties, you can go there and send it. Which is okay, like some extra clicks for the user, but we actually have a problem because if you are using Linux, we have a generic printer properties dialog. So it's simpler, it would just go there and set if you wanted to print in both sides of the paper or, or only one side, and that's fine. It's not very direct, direct like it is right now, but it's fine. But for Windows, when you click to, when you go to printer properties, what happens is it calls the native printer properties dialog. And you know, it can be very hard to, for you to set uh, some options there because each printer is different and you can have like a lot of options and a lot of apps for you to, to browse it depends on the printer and some drivers or printers don't have all options so maybe the driver that we're using don't have this option maybe you don't have this option at all in the real office so it's better to have this option as well in printer guide and just make sure it's present. Another feature that we added in the dialog is to select the paper size. And before it was only the printer properties. And now it's under general tab as well. Printer print dialog. And also now we can set uh, page orientation in print dialog. And that's very important, in my opinion, because in print dialogs in general, I mean, outside the office as well, it's pretty common to have that option in print dialog and not just in print properties. So for the user, it's a bit awkward that you don't find it in print dialog. <coughs> also, for page orientation, uh, before changing page orientation in print dialog, it took off part of the document. So it was like you have a document that is portrait, and you say, oh, but I want to bring the document in landscape. And what would happen is, uh, the document it would be still in portrait and you just flip the page to landscape. So it's cut off part of the text. And as you can see, this was an example that that's the document. And before it would cut off part of the document. And for example, you don't see the title anymore. So for writer, at least, we synchronize page orientation with document orientation. So we can change page orientation in printer, in print dialog, also change document orientation. And it would be not very frustrating for the user because he would have to close the print dialog, go to format page, and then change orientation there, and then come back to print dialog. We also added, added an option to disable print reveal. Uh, I pointed out this. I know you'll be very small, sorry. Uh, with this option, it's important in the case you have a small machine or your document is too big, so rendering print, print, print reveal would be very. Uh, but they have very annoying time. So that option is available for those users. Okay, now I'm going to talk about the current status of the project. It is still on the future branch. It's called print underscore revamp. And I'm working to merge it to master. And actually there is still many things to do for the print dialog. There are many requests 
And unfortunately, I was not able to cover them all in three months. But I am still available, and I will continue contributing to the great dialogue, especially. So we can make a better great dialogue. Thank you for your time. Any questions about this project? No? Ah, just to know if you can uh, have a custom size sheet of paper. I saw a list of predefined sizes. Is there a way to enter custom size? Yeah, unfortunately, it's not. The rest of now is not. And I'm, I'm feeling guilty right now because there are some requests about that, like that it's from 2012. But unfortunately, I could not cover it. But I had some ideas about it. Maybe I can accept tickets. Because you could say, like, uh, one of the paper sizes options is custom size that you set, you know, in, page, in format page or inside the dialogue as well. You could have that option. Also, you can print all of your documents uh, 
whether they are the protestant groups or partners of the groups, uh, compared to that using uh, the other viewer. Another feature is uh, customizing your worksheets uh, or your call documents. Uh, before this patch, uh, there is no option for uh, adding new worksheets or removing or relating them. And uh, now you can do all of them. Uh, as an example, uh, this is a new name for your sheet. Uh, you just Type your name and take this. There is a there is a bug that made uh, the viewer almost impossible to use because uh, when you make any change on the document, uh, let's say you decided to switch to another app, and when you switch back to Office Android Viewer, you will lose all the changes you made, uh, unfortunately. Uh, with this fix, uh, now the Viewer stores uh, all the changes you made uh, into a cache file on the right, as you can see. And now, when you switch back to Android Viewer, it loads it, uh, loads this file instead of the uh, original file that was that had no changes you made. So now you can uh, save your data. One last thing uh, language support. Actually uh, I did not do this through some of book because there wasn't enough time but I continued to work on this uh, after some of what this is still in code review and now uh, with this page uh, Android viewer can support multiple languages uh, as a demonstration I translate it in, into my native language Turkish and it is how it looks like Do, do you have any questions about that work? Uh, 
uh, that showed a bug and the, the developer on the other side of the QA as a person can just replay the actions that were logged. So many of the, the DCL uh, elements are covered in uh, like, uh, default uh, dialog items, buttons, checkboxes and so on. Uh, in, in some builds, keys, uh, key presses, uh, they are not enabled in all builds. So for release builds, uh, obviously we don't want to have any way uh, to lock uh, keys. Uh, keys just to avoid anybody being able to lock passwords or something similar. Uh, we lock human commands with, uh, um, with their parameters that for example covers by any interaction with menus and so on. Uh, some kind of selection of objects, like, like uh, when you select a uh, shape and four or inverse, uh, the sidebar is covered. Uh, opening and closing of mobile and motor dialogs is mostly covered. There are some special dialogs that don't go through the normal uh, e process, so the usual. Uh, provider, data 
open source. Uh, and the second part is because it's external data, we usually need to sanitize the data, um, clean it up, um, and, and then import it into our document. The second part is done through data transformations, and uh, we did some work on uh, data sources, data transformations, and uh, also storing and uh, reading the data back from the F files. Um, one important thing compared to most of our other uh, external data uh, features that we already have in Kyle is that we can update the data and automatically we reapply these data transformations. So when these data uh, change, we, we can easily import them again into uh, Kyle. The data transformations uh, change the data and they are basically some, some simple uh, transformations that are usually applied on a, on a whole column. Uh, right now, as you mentioned, uh, after this work we have now 38 or I think by now it might be 40. Uh, that, that do some stuff like <coughs> if, if there are um, null values, so, so missing values in there. Um, Changing the data format, text transformations, and so on. Uh, hopefully, we can add some more. There is a whole list that I have that would be nice. Uh, changing data types and so on. Another important part on the way to make the feature really useful is that we implemented exporting and importing. So, at least to ODF, we can't restore the data. Uh, and can read it back, so, so that yeah, we don't have to do it every time. Uh, what's not finished yet, or what we already started, is a bit of work on you know interfaces, so that you can write data transformations and uh, data providers in view, uh, some you know uh, language, like Python or so on. Uh, but the interfaces are not finished. Uh, an important part uh, is that as soon as we uh, think about interacting with map services, we need uh, to provide credentials and we don't want to store credentials, especially passwords, unprotected, so we need to find a way to encrypt them. Uh, and one thing that, that Excel does much better than we do right now is uh, how to access the data that we have. And uh, the idea is to have a way to um, address them through column headers um, that identify a column instead of a normal, uh, it's the third column you would specify, okay, it's the column with uh, that and that name. Um, because we're still working on it, so uh, after some of the has now started working on making the uh, user interface. So that maybe for uh, 6.2 or 6.3 we might be able to use it. Any questions about this?